The weather forecast for this crossing looks as follows. We will start with an area of no wind and then the wind will set in from the northwest and is then forecast to veer to the north with uh, some no wind zone just in front of the coast of uh, Norway and then in a couple of days we plan to sail from Inverness here in the north of Scotland across to Norway and there are various options we can go to Alesund, we can go to Bergen or we can go in the area of Haugesund and Stavanger. The first option would be uh, to sail along the Scottish coast, we could go out in Wick, we could go out here in the Orkneys on Fair Isle and then for sure make a stop in Lerick on Shetland. Uh, that's about 180 nautical miles in total and then there's the second leg from Lerick to Aalesund about 250 nautical miles. The reason why we considered this route uh, was because we could with that avoid this peninsula here here that's Stadlandet and that's a very notorious headland uh, that you can only go around in very settled uh, conditions inshore or close to the shore but if we came from Lerick there would be enough sea room to actually crawl to actually go around it quite wide and therefore a safe way to go there that's the beauty of uh, of the crossing from Shetland to Aalesund. A second option would be to go from Inverness direct across to Bergen that's one long passage of 360 nautical miles with not a lot of chances to deviate or to stop. We would have to deviate into Lerick or uh, to the Orkneys or to Wick if something happens or simply just go ahead uh, and go to Bergen. But it's a long open sea passage across the North Sea. The third option would be to sail from Inverness along the south end of the Moray Forth to Peterhead, that's around here, that's about 90 nautical miles and then there would be a similarly long uh, crossing of 260 nautical miles either to Stavanger or to Haugesund here in the south. The disadvantage of this route, uh, despite the fact that it's quite a short one actually, compared to all of them it's the shortest one, uh, it's the furthest south and uh, we wanted to go as far up north as possible with the crew uh, that we get so that was not really something uh, I was looking forward to. The weather forecast for this crossing looks as follows. We will start with an area of no wind and then the wind will set in from the northwest and is then forecast to veer to the north with uh, some no wind zone just in front of the coast of uh, Norway and then in a couple of days the wind is predicted to shift to the east. We decided for the middle route directly to Bergen, the 360 nautical miles, two and a half days approximately. If the wind is good with our crew, not a problem. They said they would be for it, they were all in and uh, so this was our choice. So I hope you enjoyed the video and find out what the weather had on the cards for us. We're here at the fuel berth in Inverness, in the marina. We're ready to go, just have to fill up our tanks and then we're off to Bergen, Norway. Passage plan is done, everything is prepared, crew is on board, everything is filled up, so we couldn't be more ready than this. I just wait for the marina guy to arrive to help us. With us on board are old friends and old faces as well on Polaris. Nina, she's been here two years ago. And uh, Marcus, you've been here with Regula about maybe five years ago. Uh, so both have been on Polaris before and uh, they're going to help us bring her across the North Sea safely. How to start the engine is part of our safety briefing for every crew on Polaris. Honey. Yeah. Must long drop for you, please. Come. Yeah. Long in here. No. Don't do that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, it's you here. Yes. The, the bridge is uh, 27 meters and we are 22. Thank you. <laughs> the route out of Inverness into the Moray Firth leads us on the Kessock Bridge and through Inverness Firth with many shallows and strong tidal currents. We are just about on the turning of the tide in our favour. In such situations, we like to have someone navigating on the char plotter and someone at the helm of Polaris. The new course is 031. 031. Yes. Correct. Marcus is a very experienced racing skipper. Many moons ago, I used to crew on races on his boat on the Lake of Zurich. I happily take his lessons in boat trimming to make Polaris sail faster. And now, here, instead of the we can also take one. That's the same effect. Here, here, here. Where is that? It's uh, just about one o'clock, time for another logbook entry. So the log is A355. We've done 20 nautical miles in three hours. That's uh, actually not too bad. 1300. Our position 040. Speed is 7.2. The wind is northwest. I don't believe that. We have smooth 1009 on the barrow and the weather is fair. Okay, that's done. And now my passage plan. We got 337 nautical miles, so that's about here ish. And it's one o'clock. All about the passage plan is explained in our last video, not in the, in the video before. Uh, we can leave a link down there, but that's uh, our passage plan from Inverness to Bergen in Norway. To give you a quick overview, we left uh, Inverness today at 10 o'clock. We are now slightly out uh, in the Firth, in the, in the Moorey Firth. Having done 20 nautical miles in about six hours, we'll be up here just uh, outside Wick. Uh, that's our last port where we can decide to move in if we want. Uh, but then we will head out to the open North Sea on a east northeasterly course and uh, across to the entrance of Bergen. The overall distance is 337 nautical miles we have to do and uh, we should be there I think Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, we should arrive across in, uh, in Norway. On this screen we have our weather routing solutions. We see that various models show roughly the same course and normally I go for the easy 
MWF model which I trust to be the most precise so I'm just going to for ease of demonstration I'm going to take all the other ones out and we're just going to see the EC MWF model and if we're running our little boat down that route we, we're effectively going a little bit further up north about this way so that's that's roughly what we're going to do uh, because we're coming into wind a little bit earlier but we see that uh, we're probably going to motor until uh, early in the evening then the wind will come up and then we have this area of wind that hopefully will just be with us for all the crossing if we go on some other views that this thing can do here we see day and night so we see that's during the night that's during the day during the night and we'll see we'll just we should be there about midday ish on Wednesday I can also show uh, different things here so that's the wind so uh, west would be red and we're in the in the purple to blue area that means we're in the north northwestern area so we have northwesterly northerly winds that are that are uh, coming in and uh, true wind speed uh, is roughly maybe 15 18 20 knots here and then uh, we should have a nice wind actually uh, um, from there on eight o'clock this evening we should enter into the area where the wind is and from there on I think it should be hopefully sailing if the weather forecast is correct we are four on board Marcus and Nina are sharing the watch uh, up on deck Catherine and I were down below it's a very comfortable sailing actually because we can take some time out and uh, delegate the running of the boat which is great uh, the night shift we will explain later on tonight when we're going into it um, yes and until then there's no update we're just uh, talking along the east coast of Scotland uh, towards Wick and what the <laughs> Marcus thoughtfully does his logbook entries with the red cabin light not to disturb my sleep on the saloon setting. When we are on the way on a longer passage, we do a logbook entry every hour. Not only is it mandatory for boats to have some sort of a log, but having your position, course over ground and speed written down at regular intervals may prove invaluable should the electronics fail and good old paper chart navigation becomes necessary. Unfortunately, for this night there is only footage from Catherine's watch. Let me explain why. It's uh, Tuesday morning, 10 to 7. We're all awake and this night was quite a thing. First, let me explain you how our watch system worked for the night. We decided to do two, two, two and two. So everyone does uh, two hours. We knew that uh, Nina needed some assistance. So I did with Nina from 10 to 12 to midnight. And then I did my own from midnight to two in the morning. Then Marcus took over from two to four. And at four, Catherine got up uh, and uh, has done until six. And basically at six o'clock, we were all awake again. Um, the night was a bit lively, I would say. Uh, we had gusts over 30 knots and waves I can't judge because it was overcast. It still is overcast and it was pitch black in the night, so we couldn't see anything. So it was just the ride in the pitch black and you couldn't see the waves, uh, you couldn't see anything. And uh, that's also why poor Nina became a bit seasick around midnight, just when she went to bed. So uh, there was a bit of a clean up exercise that kept me awake and um, that uh, made time pass quicker. Nina then went to bed, she's fine again, she's up and uh, feels much better. And uh, right now the winds have come down a bit. We're uh, in the 
15 to 18 knot range. There's still some nasty waves out here because we have about half a knot of stream against the wind, which uh, builds up some nasty wave patterns. That's gonna hopefully uh, change in three hours or so and uh, the waves should flatten out. The weather should clear up hopefully in the afternoon. That's at least what uh, the meteorologists uh, and the models promise. Let's hope and uh, the wind should remain as it is, maybe a bit stronger, maybe a bit less. The models are not really clear, so we have to take what we can. We're just about 30 nautical miles before halfway point, so we're doing great progress. Uh, boat speed is seven knots plus, so that we can't complain, at least we're making distance. That was a rough night, but it's way better now. <laughs> How was your shift? <laughs> well, my shift my, uh, uh, was very nice, it was very, very dark, very... Uh, black. Uh, black, sorry. <laughs> and uh, a nice experience for me. You should see it through <laughs> someone else inside. Another cipher to break. While the grass grows underneath my feet. That's typical Swiss. For so long. Ragusa. Mm. Hello, chocolate. Hello, hello. Nice, delicious chocolate with hazelnut. Mm. Mm. Delicious. It's uh, 10 minutes to 10 in the morning. I'm on my watch. The rest of the crew, they're all having a snooze. And that's good like that. We had a rough night and uh, it's good that uh, everyone can recuperate. I've had mine before. Well, everything's going well. The wind has uh, come down, we have about 14 knots at the moment and we're doing a boat speed of about 7 knots uh, through the water and over the ground so there's not a lot of tide in here. So uh, nice beam reach that we're doing, that's okay. Bit of a swell in that uh, rocks us and makes it a bit uncomfortable but otherwise we're very happy. Visibility has come down, it's uh, about three nautical miles that we can see so roughly to the horizon but anything uh, that's just at the horizon so is very uh, very badly visible I've seen two ships just passing at the horizon in the mist the Sun is pressing so maybe we're gonna have some Sun but uh, there's also a bit of a risk that uh, there might be some fog falling on, falling on us. If the sun heats the air too much up over the cold water, that might uh, give us some fog. So um, uh, I hope that will not materialize because that's never funny. Otherwise, uh, we're doing well. We're almost half point, about five, five more nautical miles and we're um, at half point. And uh, now let me go and do a lockbook entry because it's time. I'm preparing some naan bread. Because I prepared already a curry, a chicken curry. And Actually, I would yeah. Like to have, I would like to have some lamb. But uh, it's not so easy to cook when you are sailing or on the way. Is the boat healing? Yes, it is. <laughs> and is it rocking? Yes, it's rocking as well, so yes. It's not easy to film either, Catherine. So are you doing that on the Thermomix? Yes, I think it's the easiest way to do it. That's 
be difficult to measure, Catherine. How do you do that? <laughs> I just guess. <laughs> I just do some guessing. Kind of 200. Yeah. How, much, uh, how much was that? 200. Plus 200. Yeah, yeah. we can see that. <laughs> yeah, we see that. Yeah. So what's going on here, Catherine? So the dough is now raised, and now eight similar pieces, kind of. That's a prepared curry. Let's just put some fresh broccoli and chicken in it. And then I reheat the whole stuff. We eat five star like here on Polaris. And even in the play middle of the North Sea with the moderate sea state of about one and a half meters of waves, we can do that. <laughs> and there we see the first North Sea oil platform on our way. Anguetta. 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 Look at this. Ah. Thank you very much for cooking. The weather forecast told us that the wind would come down and eventually be too weak for us to sail. In order to make landfall in Norway in daylight, the captain's order is to fire up the engine should the boat speed fall below mm. 6 knots. We enjoy one of our last proper sunsets over the North Sea. And this one is quite spectacular. Particularly also because we are in the midst of the North Sea oil platforms, which make for a dramatic backdrop. As we progress further north and towards the Arctic Circle, the sun will eventually no longer set. And after a calm and uneventful night, the sun rises again over the sea. The wind has died long before and Polaris sails under engine into her last 20 nautical miles towards the Norwegian coast. I've been acting like a wild man Sleeping like a child so luminous and vibrant I'm always in bloom for you Always in bloom Our AIS system alerts us on one of the few ships on our way A fishing vessel that is still beyond the horizon As these ships make frequent and unpredictable turns We have to keep an eye on this one New country again. We have just entered Norwegian waters and uh, as is custom we will fly our Norwegian courtesy flag. Long overdue to take down the Scottish flag. We could have taken her down when we left the British waters. We didn't so uh, it's now time for the Scottish flag to come down.
especially in Norway. <laughs> and finally, after 50 hours of sailing and motoring, we have made it. We make landfall in Norway and are proud to have successfully crossed the notorious North Sea. Having arrived in fisherman's paradise, we can't wait to dip our lures into the fjord. Unfortunately, we are not successful, but our luck will turn in the next episode. Stay tuned. We make our first attempt in sailing the Norwegian fjords and quickly learn that the rumors are true. Here, the winds come from all directions and in all strength. So we soon give up and let good old Volvo Penta push us up the fjords with its beautiful and different views. Our journey is not over yet. Ahead of us lay another 20 nautical miles through Cross Fjorden, Raune Fjorden and past the 49 meter high Stongi Bridge into Bergen. The approach into Bergen is quite busy. There are many large cargo and passenger ships running through the narrow fjords and the famous Hurtirouten, the coastal passenger route up to the Russian border in Kirkenes starts here. In these narrow channels, a leisure boat, even when under sail, must not impede a large commercial ship. Or, as the saying in Norway goes, those who sail for pleasure should give way to those who sail for their bread. We are approaching our final destination, Bergen, in Norway. After a long trip, we started Monday 10 o'clock. It's now Wednesday 4. You do the math. Uh, 360 nautical miles non-stop. It was a good trip, a bit of everything. We could sail much more than we thought. We had uh, in the first night some quite violent winds with gusts up to 30 and above and then uh, in during this night almost no wind so we did a lot of motoring this night but uh, now we have arrived about another 10 minutes and then we should be in Bergen in the center and uh, try to find a berth for us for the next few days Zufrieden? Oder wollen wir noch einführen? 